So hello, what's up? I hope all of you are doing great. Welcome to today's session in which we are going to discuss a very important topic of the chapter NBFC audit that is NBFC classification. So this is a new type of classification which has been introduced by RBI and I feel it's very important for your coming examinations. So one of the classifications of NBFC is into deposit taking and non-deposit taking and in the non-deposit taking there are two further sub classification systemically important and non-systemically important. Are you aware about those two classifications? Yes sir. This is an additional classification which has been introduced by RBI in that we are going to discuss in today's video. So let's understand. So it says that the NBFC's classification will be based on four layers. These four layers shall be based on the size of the NBFC. Size means the asset size of the NBFC, the type of activity it is considering and the riskiness which is associated with the business. Okay? So these are the three parameters based on which they have made four layers of NBFC. What are those four layers? First layer is the base layer. Second layer is the middle layer. Very easy names. Then comes the upper layer and the last layer is the top layer. So let's start with the base layer. Base layers you can consider as the NBFCs with, with a less asset size, less riskiness and engaged in very typical activities which they don't work like a NBFC. Okay, sir. So what are these NBFCs? First ones are non-deposit taking NBFC. That means we are not talking about deposit taking NBFC in the first layer. Okay. Here we are only focusing on the non-deposit taking NBFC with the asset size of less than 1000 crore where their asset size is below 1000 crore did i say 100 crore no sir did i say 1 lakh crore no sir did i say 10000 crore no sir i only said 1000 crore so if it is a non deposit taking nbfc asset size is less than 1000 crore then it will land in the base layer so this is about the asset size got the point yes sir now let's talk about the activities i said now these layers are based on the size and the activity in terms of activities first type of nbfcs are the one who are engaged in peer to peer lending platform so what is a peer to peer lending platform let's understand let's assume there is a person shubh that is me shubham then there is akash sir okay we both are there I need money, Akash sir has lots of money, okay? and in between both of us, there is a lending platform called CRED, I hope you have heard about it. So what will CRED do? CRED will take money from Akash sir, it will lend money to me, okay? it will charge some interest from me, let's say it charges interest rate of 12% from me. It provides Akash sir with around let's say 99% and the CRED's income in this case is 3%. The NBFC here is earning 3%. Now just tell me what are you getting the feel of? Here in this case this NBFC that is CRED what it is doing? It is acting as a peer to peer lending platform in which one person is lending to the other person and NBFC is just acting as an intermediary. Do you think NBFC has any risk? The answer is no. Do you think NBFC is doing any major activity? The answer is no. The NBFC is just acting like an agent in which one person is providing the funds to the other person and the NBFC is just acting like a platform. It is just providing you with a platform. So this is actually going on in the market. If you go to CRED or any apps like that, they are actually providing you uh, investment opportunities in which you can provide them with the funds and they, they are offering attractive interest rates of 9% to 12%. I am not marketing them. I am just giving you an insight that this is, this is one of the activities that NBFCs are taking care of these days. So this is the basic and classic concept of peer-to-peer -peer lending platform. So, is there any major activity? No. So, it becomes a part of the base layer. Similarly, there is one more NBFC which is not doing any uh, task of procuring the funds and lending them. This is called account segregator. So, just understand. I go to a bank. Okay? I go to a bank. When I am going to the bank, I am getting my account uh, registered with the bank. I have to provide a lot of information. My name, my contact number, my email address, 
my residential address they also get information about my credit score credit history everything that information is provided to the bank can that information be shared by the bank with the nbfc the answer is yes now let's assume this bank was icic bank after this i go for account opening in hdfc bank but i am not uh, in a mood to share my account details again hdfc bank Already has my account details. How, sir? This NBFC held them. Yani, this NBFC took my account details from ICICI and provided to the HDFC bank. So, there is one more activity that NBFCs are doing these days. They are aggregating the account details of the customers. Come on. They are aggregating the account details of the customer so that when a customer opens his bank with, opens its account with multiple banks, it is he or she is not required to share that information again and again with different types of banks so again my question to you is this nbfc in the real nbfc activity no is it procuring funds no is it lending funds no again that's the reason it is in the base layer it is just maintaining a pool of information of the bank's clients so that's all about it this is called an accounts aggregator Third one again is an NBFC which is not doing anything that's why it is also called non-operative that means it is not having any operations then sir what it is doing it is just acting as a holding company for various financial companies come on it is not a financial company it is just an holding company to the various financial company with zero operations so what do we call non-operational financial holding company come on non-operational not holding any operations it is uh, it is a holding company of which types of companies financial companies so non-operative financial holding company come on non-operative financial holding company so these are the three category three nbfcs which land in the base layer and the last one is nbfcs not availing any public funds they are not taking funds from any public and they are not having any customer interface again they are also not doing anything so these are the four NBFCs. I hope you have understood them. Let's learn them. So the first NBFC is what? P2P lending. Okay, that's P. The second one is accounts aggregator. If we cl club both of them, what it becomes? Sir, it becomes PA. PA, 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 PA. So PA is a short form for parents. Got it, sir. And who is the parent company? Holding company. So the next point is non-operative holding company. No, sir. Non-operative financial holding company so the three points i hope are clear pa that means parent p for p2p lending platform aa for accounts aggregator and pa means parent parent means holding company holding means non-operative financial holding company and the other one is also not doing anything that means not accessing any public funds plus not having any customer interface so these are the four categories of nbfc's four activities based nbfc's which are classified in the base layer is this part clear to all of you yes sir so i hope you have learned this part now let's move to the mid middle layer now sir what is this middle layer all about first of all it talks about deposit taking nbfc earlier when we did not talk about deposit taking nbfc we talked about non-deposit taking nbfc here we will first of all focus on all the deposit taking nbfcs irrespective of their asset size we don't give a damn about asset size okay all deposit taking nbfcs become a part of it got it sir and the non deposit taking nbfcs what was the limit that we discussed earlier 1 crore no sir 100 crore no sir 1000 crore come on 1000 crore so earlier we said below the asset size of 1000 crore but now the asset size has increased to 1000 crore that means non deposit taking nbfcs with asset size of 1000 crores and above and they are engaged in following activities sir again do we need to learn these activities the answer is yes sir but we have forgot the other ones no 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 you have not forgot you want me to revise it again yes sir let's revise it again first of all base layer asset size first of all non deposit taking okay asset size less than 1000 crore what are the different types of activity pa 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 parent parent holding company sing with me pa 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 parent parent holding company so what do you mean by pa p for p2p lending nbfc not doing anything 
A for accounts aggregator, just collecting the information. NBFC, not doing anything. And not doing anything means non-operative financial holding company. And the last one is not having any customer interface, not accessing the public funds. You remember everything? Take a chill pill. Now let's move to the next part, which talks about depositing in NBFC. Non-depositing in NBFC with the asset size of 1000 crore and above and engaged in the following activity. So first of all, the first kind of NBFCs are standalone primary dealers. Sir, who are these dealers? Government of India needs money. Modi ji needs money. Okay, government needs money. For that, they issue variety of securities, variety of government bonds. Will Modi ji come to the market and start selling the bonds? The answer is no. They have to appoint some dealers who are primarily dealing in the government securities. Understanding the analogy? Yes, sir. So dealers who are primarily dealing in the government securities, providing them to the general public, these are called standalone primary dealers. Did you get the point? Yes, sir. So as an NBFC, are they doing some major activity? The answer is no. But still they are dealing with the government. This is a high risk business. That's why they have been moved to the middle layer. Did you get this point? Yes, sir. So that's the point you need to understand. First of all, SPD. Sir, what do you mean by SPD? Stand alone primary dealers. Just understand these concepts with me. I will make you learn them. Don't worry. Let's move to the next one. Infrastructure debt fund, infrastructure finance companies. So what is the difference between the two? One point is clear. Both of them are dealing in something which is related to the infrastructure. Got it. Infrastructure finance companies are directly financing those infrastructure projects. So for the infrastructure, that means your road building, uh, bridges building, railway network, all these come in infrastructure, right? Buildings and all. So for that buildings, for those roads, for those bridges, you need funds. So if an NBFC is directly lending for those projects, that is called an infrastructure finance company. Is this part clear? Yes, sir. Now comes the another type of NBFC. What is that NBFC doing? Suppose for an infrastructure project, there are banks who have provided funds. Let's say there is a bank 1 which has given the funds, bank 2 that has given the funds, bank 3 that has given the funds. Now bank 1 is worried whether this money will come back. Bank 2 is also worried whether this money will come back. Bank 3 is also worried whether this money will come back. So there is one NBFC which is buying all those loans. It is buying these loans from bank 1, bank 2, bank 3. And these loans are then provided to the general customers in the form of units. That is the mutual fund units. So this is what this NBFC does. It buys these loans from bank 1, bank 2, bank 3. These are infrastructure loans. All these loans are bought by the NBFC. Then they are converted into units. These units are issued to the general public. These units are issued to the general public in the form of mutual fund units. So this is what this NBFC is doing. So did this NBFC directly finance the infrastructure? The answer is no. This is called indirect way of financing. Direct financing was done by the banks. As the NBFC, it just bought those bank loans and then clubbed them and issued as units to the general public. So this is called infrastructure debt fund NBFC. And yeah, that's what we just discussed. Then there are two more NBFCs, very easy. Core investment company, this is something which we also discussed in Caro. Most of the mutual funds, most of the mutual funds, these are equity mutual funds or debt mutual funds, these are core investment companies only. Okay, sir. And then comes housing finance companies. These housing finance companies, one of the famous housing finance company was HDFC, which got clubbed with the HDFC bank. Now they have merged to become a single entity that is HDFC Bank Limited. So housing finance company, as you can easily understand, they are financing the housing projects. So these are the five types of NBFC, which become a part of the base layer. Achha. Okay, middle layer, yeah, Baba, we are talking about middle layer. Got it, sir. So, sir, how will we remember these five points? Please understand. What was the first layer? Base layer. Once the base is set, let's build something. Come on. Once the base is set, let's build something. What we will build? House and infrastructure. Come on. House and infrastructure. So the three points are done. 
हाउसिंग फाइनेंस कंपनी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फाइनेंस कंपनी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेट फंड इज दिस पार्ट क्लियर यस सर बेस वॉट कुड बी दिनोनिम ऑफ द बेस सर इट इज द कोर फॉर बिल्डिंग अ हाउस यू नीड अ स्ट्रॉन्ग कोर अ स्ट्रॉन्ग बेस so sir core investment company part is also done and when you are building something it is generally a very alone process you have to stand alone and build something and once it is built many people come together theek hai you would have generally seen this in your family also when someone is building something they are standing alone putting their efforts and building that thing and once it is built everyone wants to join in and be a part of that it's a very psychological thing i shared with you okay so the last point you understand is stand alone primary dealer so these are the five points base is built base is core that is core investment company now let's build how do you build you stand alone so that is stand alone primary dealer what are you going to build house and infrastructure housing finance company infrastructure finance company what is the indirect way of doing that infrastructure debt fund acha you may have a question sir will i ici ask us to explain this all the answer is no they have not given a single explanation even in their study material i just provided you that explanation so that you have some context about it otherwise these would have been just different names that's it so you just need to remember these five names let's uh, recollect again first one was Uh, base that is core core investment company then you have to build standing alone stand alone primary dealer say it with me stand alone primary dealer and then what are the three others house and infrastructure housing finance company infrastructure finance company and infrastructure debt fund done done are done done now the other two layers are ultra ultra easy trust me they are ultra ultra easy if you are done with the first two layers that is the base layer and the upper layer you need not worry about the other two let's see what they talk about nbfcs in the upper layer these will be identified by rbi okay based on their riskiness based on how much systemic risk they have let's understand they are identified by rbi where rbi feels they need to enhance the regulatory requirements they need to put in more regulations based on their own set of parameters and scoring methodology nothing to worry about here we need not even go through the appendix not a part of our syllabus but the best thing that you need to remember for mcq point of view is top 10 you must have played that game in your childhood also top 10 top 10 eligible nbfcs in terms of asset size shall always reside in the upper layer irrespective of any other factor so this is the point that i hope please you remember this that the top 10 el eligible nbfcs will become a part of base layer wrong upper layer wrong right <laughs> right now so base layer middle layer upper layer base layer no middle layer no but yes they will become a part of upper layer top 10 eligible nbfc sir what about the top layer it will remain empty <laughs> like everyone theek okay? hai so top layer generally remains empty this layer can get populative if rbi is of the opinion that there is a substantial increase in the potential systemic risk of the nbfc means nbfcs are holding very risky assets such nbfc shall move to the top layer from the upper layer so from the upper layer they will be moved to the top layer so i hope you got the point uh, and now let's move to the very very important topic that is categorization of nbfcs carrying out specific activity if you are done with the earlier points properly this topic will feel very very easy also it is ultra important for your exams sir you say everything is important how do we believe you okay i will give you some context does that work yes sir RTP, RTP, May twenty three. Ta ta ta. Now you are getting a feel of importance. Yes, sir. So it, this topic was asked in RTP May twenty three, in which ICI asked, please explain the categorization of NBFCs on the basis of various activities. So first of all, it says whatever there are NBFCs in the base layer. What were the base layer NBFC? Let's recollect. Base layer. Who builds the base base? If I talk about a family, who builds the base? Sir, it's the parents. Who are the parents? Pa, 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 pa. Come on. P for P to P, person to person, peer to peer lending. NBFC not doing anything. A for A A for accounts aggregator. Pa means parent. Parents mean holding, holding, not doing anything. Non-operative financial holding company. Very good. And then the last one was not accessing the public funds, not having any customer interface. Is the first part clear? Yes, sir. Now let's move to the middle layer. In the middle layer, it says, it says, it says, it says 
that these three can become a part of upper layer or stay in the middle layer but the first two that is stand alone it will keep standing alone in the middle layer and the second one which is the indirect way of infrastructure financing will stay in the middle layer so the first two that is the stand alone will stand alone in the middle layer and the indirect way of infrastructure it may it will also remain in the middle layer the other three that is housing finance company infrastructure finance company and the third one was core investment company they may be a part of middle layer or they can be moved to the upper layer but they will not be in the base layer now let's talk about the remaining nbfc for this remaining nbfc part you should have a good cricket knowledge the cricket knowledge yes see these are just names you have to learn them simple first one is icc so it is not in <laughs> international cricket council it is investment credit company got it sir now the cricket fans will be very happy which is the biggest ground of cricket let me take a sip of water till then please tell me which is the biggest ground of cricket even i am not sure which is the biggest ground but which one which is one of the most famous ground sir mcg melbourne cricket ground come on melbourne cricket ground but now you will not talk about M mgc you will uh, mcg you will talk about mgc what is mgc mortgage guarantee companies okay you must have heard about muthut loan finance so what they do they take your gold they provide you with money so what they are doing they are mortgaging they are high, uh, they are basically taking your gold as a security and then providing you with money so that's mortgage guarantee companies that's again something uh, which will lie in any of the layers depending on the parameters and the last one is in between the cricket there are ads yes sir there are ads in those ads there are drinks break who brings the drinks sir generally the small players small players means micro that is micro finance institution and small players means factors factors are generally in small so nbfc factor so these are the three points to remember cricket means icc ground and ad icc ground ad icc means investment credit company we also discuss about its checklist in this chapter i hope you remember this yes sir then comes the ground mortgage guarantee companies that is mgc and in between the ads small players yani micro finance institution and nbfc factors we talk about this and last part is about the government owned nbfc acha tell me government owned nbfcs are great nbfcs or ave nbfcs sir so these are ave nbfcs since these are ave nbfcs they will not become a part of upper layer till further notice they will always remain a part of base layer or middle layer so this is how you remember this whole topic is this done 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 yes sir sir can we please revise it all what we have studied till now yes let's revise let's revise let's revise let's revise it's a wonderful topic if done the right way nbfc classification let's discuss so the four layers are based on deposit taking non deposit taking and the asset size got it also on the basis of activity that they are doing got it sir base layer it consists of non deposit taking nbfc with the asset size of less than 1000 crore say it with me less than 1000 crore then there are four categories of activities pa pa parent parent who sets the base of the house parents that means pa p to p lending accounts aggregator parent means holding parent means holding company that means non operative financial holding company not accessing any public funds not having any customer interface then comes the middle layer deposit taking nbfc non deposit taking nbfc with the asset size of 1000 crore and above then comes the four five categories uh base means core that is core investment company what do you build upon that infrastructure or house infrastructure finance company infrastructure debt fund housing finance company very good and the last one is whenever you are building something you are standing alone stand alone primary dealer and in this we also know st stand alone primary dealer and indirect way of infrastructure financing that is infrastructure debt fund two of these will always remain in the middle layer the other three can remain in the middle layer or can move to the upper layer talking about the upper layer top 10 nbfcs will on the basis of asset size will will be a part of upper layer and last one is the top layer it remains empty but rbi can on the basis of increase in systemic risk move some nbfcs from upper layer to top layer last part was categorization of nbfc first talk about base layer we already remember those four five points pa 
non operating financial holding company and the last one was not accessing any public funds not having any customer interface then we talk about the middle layer first two that is stand alone keep standing alone in the middle layer second one infrastructure debt fund stay in the middle layer the other three can move in from middle layer to the upper layer now we talk about the cricket mgc uh, icc infrastructure credit company mortgage guarantee companies and the other one was ad breaks that is micro finance institution nbfc factors they will uh, become a part of any layer depending on the activities and the asset size depending on the various parameters and the last one was government nbfcs these government owned nbfcs will always stay in the base or the middle layer but will never move to the upper layer that's all from my side i hope you enjoyed this session please continue studying like this the exams are near and i want you to score very very well so if you like the video do give it a like stay subscribed to the channel for more such videos and yes keep studying with happiness because then only we progress khushi se padhenge tabhi aage badhenge